It's that time again. Let's see what's in the vintage toy box. Today I'm once again joined by my lovely husband Stephen. Hiya. Because today we're doing another Lego bulb. If you remember, we bought this set. It's a three-in-one Lego set. And last time we did the Tyrannosaurus. Today we're going to be doing the Triceratops. I think that's right. Yes. Yeah. Also, you might notice we're not in our normal filming place. We're actually in the kitchen because there's just too much going on in the lounge at the moment. So, without further ado, let's get into the bulb. Okay, let's get started. We'll move Rex out of the way. And we will begin with the next one. Firstly, of course, we must open the box, get all the bits and bobs out. All the gubbins. Right. Um, and as you can see, there are three builds in one. Um, today, we are going to do that one, which is, as we said before, the uh, Triceratops. Um, so let's, hopefully we can open these packets. Now the instructions are gonna probably be out of the, the shot for the most part. Yes, they are. But um, I'll periodically show things. Now there are two types of greens here and one of the issues that I commonly have with Legos when you have very similar colours, the, the colour on the instructions is not always that accurate. These pieces, I don't know if you can see, um, are quite unique um, and when I was younger I would have thought that this was more like Technic Lego um, because they, they make things move and stuff, but uh, uh, it's, it's quite interesting how they use it for, for, for this thing to get the ball joints.
So when you finished, we finished all three of these, are you going to make like a Jurassic scene? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Is it Jurassic that these come from? Well, no, actually, all all three of them, because I think the other one's meant to be the flying one, uh, is meant to be a Pteranodon, um, of Cretaceous. Uh, See, there you go. I don't know my dinosaurs as well as he does. Something that people quite often get wrong uh, with regards to the flying one is they think that's a dinosaur, and it's not. It's actually... Um, you know, a pterosaur, it's a, it's a flying reptile, it's a completely different line um, to dinosaurs and it's, uh, it's not in the, name, in the same category, but people just think that they're dinosaurs. Talk about dinosaurs, I hear they discovered a fossilised voice box of a meat-eating dinosaur and it kind of looks like a bird's voice box. Yes. Which would possibly mean that T-Rex didn't roar, it squawked. Yeah, or tweeted. Or yeah. tweeted. That would not go down <laughs> well in Jurassic Park. On to yeah, the next page. Yeah, um, I mean, they, they now know that dinosaurs, particularly the uh, meat-eating ones, are very close related to birds. So, naturally, a lot of them, uh, a lot of the anatomy would be this similar. Um, an interesting point is now they they almost um, classify birds as avian dinosaurs. So you can basically say that dinosaurs are still alive. Mm, I've heard that. Um, so when you eat your chicken dinner, you're actually eating a relative of T-Rex. And the same, my mom's cockatiel is probably a relative of yeah. T-Rex. with a lot less teeth. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I think if a cockatiel had that many teeth, you probably wouldn't want it in your lounge. No. Though it does beg the question, if dinosaurs had voice boxes like birds, would they be able to emu emulate speech like birds do? Well, I suppose some of the smaller ones might. I mean, the big ones, uh, you know, the bigger the voice box, the different sort of sounds they make. I would have thought it might make it a bit more difficult. But, um, you never know. Just sitting here imagining a T-Rex saying, who's a pretty T-Rex then? <laughs> well, they, they believe that in one of the fossils they may have extracted from a T-Rex bone some genetic material. Um which has a few sort of DNA particles where they can tell are very similar to that of a chicken. So a T-Rex could in fact be, a, a chicken could in fact be a direct descendant of a T-Rex, which would be funny. This is a leg that I've mm. built. Kentucky Fried T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. That just does not sound right. Not at all. The Colonel would be horrified. <laughs> Though the portions would be bigger. <laughs> yeah, much bigger. I don't think you'd get a good bargain bucket. It'd have to be a bargain dumpster. <laughs> Sorry, we have a terror. We have a really weird sense of humour, the two of us, when we get together. As you probably can tell, I'm still rather interested in uh, dinosaurs and prehistoric life in general. And Lego. Well, and Lego, obviously. Um, on my channel, I intend to be doing a little bit of a, a, a series on dino facts. So um, I will make sure Rose lets you know when I've done that, if any of you are interested. Um, I'm at the moment fishing out resource um, information on some unusual dinosaurs. Um, that uh, you know, that a lot of people possibly don't know about. So, um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, come and join me there. I'll put a link in down below under this video. Mm. If um, anyone wants to go and check that out. So right, this is another leg. I love the back leg. Mm. I love these ball joints. They are so such a clever idea. 
definitely. Right. <laughs> Next page. I don't know if any of you guys have ever built um, with the Lego copies um, you know, that come from China. Um, they used to be, you know, very, well, I suppose cheap and nasty. The, 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 the bricks didn't fit together well and that sort of thing, but they actually have got better recently, at some makes anyway. Um, and they, they, they interact quite well with the original, uh, with other Lego pieces. Um, but there is still definitely, as far as I'm concerned, the Lego is, the, the genuine Lego is better quality. Um, but then of course you pay for it as such because it's, Lego is so much more expensive than I remember it as, though I could be wrong, but yeah. yeah. Lego is expensive. But as a toy for, for, for children, I think it's worth the money because it really, it does get your creative juices flowing. Um, and it's a definite alternative to computers. Oh, definitely. Kids spend way too long on the computers. That said, so do we. So yeah, you, you can't, you can't, you can't, um, uh, you know, stop technology. That's how things go, and you know, our our culture is literally changed to fit in with technology. Um, and everybody always says when you, you know, things change because we generally don't like change, that it's bad, but... It isn't. It, it's not all bad, uh, you know, it's just, it's just different. Um, and you know, you, you kind of have to. I'm not great with computers, um, but if I did not, ha did not use computers, I could not work. So, you know, <laughs> you learn. Um, I only learn what I need to know. But then of course I didn't grow up having a computer, whereas uh, people now will grow up having computers Oi, in front of them. Oi, you're showing our age. There's some more. That's the next ones we next get on. So, you know, a three-year-old can use computers these days. This is true. I've literally asked my friend's nine-year-old son to fix my phone and he's managed to fix it. <laughs> yeah. But you see, that's not bad because that is how the future's going. They, uh, you need to be tech, reasonably tech savvy. Otherwise, in when you grow up now, you're not going to be able to compete with other people who are. Fair point. You know, and there are less and less sort of manual jobs because computers can do so much so you, you you've got to learn how to operate the computer that does the job and that's where the jobs are going to be in the future true well that went off on a tangent didn't it 
Well, I think it's nice to have a chat whilst you're doing this. I would presume that um, uh, a lot of design work these days with Lego is, is computerised. But I know, bef and I think they still do have, but I know a lot of, um, they have basically designers who sit around with a load of bricks and actually come up with stuff. Um, right, so this bit I'm putting on there is obviously the horn. Quite a good yeah. horn. Aren't those lovely? There we are. Oh, wow. So, Mr. Rex and Mr. Ceratops. Sarah. So, I think that's the build. And there you go. And that's our second Lego build complete. A big thank you to Stephen for being here with me doing this Lego build. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And please remember to comment, rate, subscribe. It does help out us smaller YouTubers. Until next time and our next build, bye. Bye.